Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name is Jeff Beers. Today we're looking at Microsoft stock. They just posted their Q1 earnings. So it's time to take a look at our price projections for Microsoft. Microsoft's fiscal year runs from July until June. So this price projection that we're trying to put in uh, would actually come out in late July when they would announce their Q4 earnings. So let's take some of the things we learned from the earnings call, speculate a little bit ahead, and see where Microsoft might land and if it's a good deal to pick up the stock right now. Reminder, as always, that my stock picks and projections, they're just my opinion for your entertainment. Please do your own research before investing in any stock. And if you do like researching stocks and going through videos like this, then be sure to give the video a like and please subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Thank you to everybody who has helped the channel succeed so far. And one last call out, if you're interested in joining the 40 Finance email list, there's a link in the description. I'll send you my free 15 minute stock analysis report as soon as you sign up. Look for the link below. All right, so coming out of yesterday's earnings call, Microsoft had an awesome earnings report. And the only reason the stock got dinged a little bit was because uh, the analysts got all worried about their projections for Q4. Talk about it in a minute, very minor issue. But you see the headline there, Microsoft earnings easily top expectations, but forecast for Xbox debut quarter ding stock. I highlighted a couple lines here though. Microsoft reported first quarter earnings Tuesday of $13.9 billion or a $1.82 per share. So $1.82 EPS, the expectation, guys, was $1.54. So they crushed that. Scrolling down a little bit there, you see the, the last highlight. Microsoft guided for revenue of $39.5 to $40.4 billion in the next quarter, which would be a gain over last year's $36.9 billion uh, in Q2. That range, however, was just a little short of the average estimate of 40.5 billion. All right, so I mentioned uh, the Xbox weakness, if you will. I think everybody's really excited for these new consoles to come out. Uh, and Microsoft is too, but they came out like they always do. And they had like a rational expectation uh, for next quarter. In this past quarter, they reported sales of $11.85 in the more personal computing segment, which includes PC and Xbox. That was up from $11.13 billion in the same period a year ago and ahead of the average analyst estimate of $11.18 billion. Now looking ahead, you got to go all the way down to the final highlighted uh, segment there. The revenue in Xbox's segment is expected to be $13.2 billion to $13.6 billion. Analysts wanted them to come out and say $14 billion. They may still hit that, but don't forget, you know, the world is still in a strange place. Holiday shopping may not be the same kind of thing that we saw last year. In fact, undoubtedly, it probably won't be. I'm really not surprised that Microsoft took this kind of cautious approach. All right, looking at the stock today, today the stock market is down uh, anywhere from 2 to 3%, depending on when you log in. And Microsoft, after all those earnings, comes in uh, when I started this at 10 o'clock, minus 3.87. And frankly, it's just unbelievable that you're, you know, coming in and you're reporting over your uh, EPS estimates and, and you're still down. Even before the market kind of went down today, Microsoft was down after earnings for not coming out and saying, you know, we're going to sell 600 billion Xboxes, right? So here we are at 205. EPS today, and this is updated for the trailing 12 months with that $1.82 uh, EPS number from yesterday. So if you look at the chart off to the right, you can see, you know, I kind of picked July 1st of 2020. That was a time when Microsoft was trading at 204. 205 range. They've had some ups and downs since then, but skipping ahead to today, they've literally made billions of dollars uh, since that time, and they've beat a quarterly estimate, and we're still trading at a price that's very similar uh, to what we saw back in July. You got a P-E ratio today of 33.23, 
And so we're going to take all that information and roll it forward and make EPS and PE projections. All right, just some fundamentals on these prediction parameters. We're using a very simple formula here that anyone can do at home. Formula is price equals PE times EPS. This is not something that I made up. This is something that exists across investing. And it really is that simple that if you have a projection for your EPS and you have a projection for your PE, you can basically pick what you think a stock will be in the future. Now, obviously, when we go through this exercise, it's just going to be my opinion on both of those things. We, we do have to make assumptions in this game. There's no way around it. Uh, so you but you can do this at home and make your own assumptions and see where things uh, land for you when it comes to Microsoft or any stock. Just keep in mind, like we talked about in the beginning, Microsoft has a little bit different fiscal year than a calendar year. Theirs runs July to June. So this target price, we're looking at uh, July of next year because it usually takes about 30 days or so uh, for corporations to come out and announce their earnings after they've been posted. All right, so one of the things that I always do with EPS projections is try to get a feel for how has the company reported in the past. And in this green box here, this is earnings history for Microsoft, goes back to September of 2019. And the big thing that I'm always looking for is this surprise percentage. How often did analysts project one thing and the corporation come in plus or minus uh, those projections, right? And we see with Microsoft, if you follow along on the bottom of the green box, you got 11, plus 11%, plus 14, plus 11, plus 9. And then most recently, yesterday on 1027, they were 18% above the analyst estimate coming in at whatever, $1.82 on like $1.54, something like that. So you put all that information together and you get an average of about 12% that Microsoft tends to beat over analyst expectations. All right, so we got our 12% uh, that we typically see over analyst expectations. You roll that down into the blue box, which is the analyst expectations for the full year, full fiscal year of 2021. They're coming at $6.45 right now. You add 12% to that and you get an EPS of 722. Now, one of the things that we might see is analysts might up their expectations after yesterday's report. Uh, but it'll take a while for that to kind of navigate in the system. For now, I would say the 645 is actually a conservative number uh, because it doesn't really reflect what we saw yesterday. So I feel very comfortable adding 12% to this number right now and giving us a new EPS projection of 722. All right, so we got one part of the equation out of the way, right? We got our 722. That's our EPS that we expect on July of 2021 under my assumptions. So if we take the 722 and we roll it into today's price of 205, you can see that our regular PE as of today, the actual is 33. The forward using this number 722 falls to 2839. And if we take 2839 and we compare historical PEs for Microsoft, we can see that that runs pretty much right in line. If you look at the green box, um, obviously this year has been very strange. But if we go back to last year and see Microsoft was trading on a trailing PE of 29, 27, 29, 27, uh, and even this year had a 27, then what we saw was the market started to go up and valuations kind of went crazy. And that's probably why we're having a dip today. Uh, so valuation on Microsoft in June went up to 34. And you can't see it because I uh, kind of struck it out here. Yesterday before earnings, Microsoft was in that 38, 37 range. So with our new forward EPS at 722, we get down to 2839. And so what I would say coming out of this whole thing is that right now, if you can get Microsoft at 205, you are buying it at a historically normal price for the stock. It's not necessarily on sale at 205, 
But when you consider the run-up that Microsoft has had and the rest of the market has had, this opportunity right now, with the stock market down about 3%, this opportunity in and around 205, it's a very nice entry point from a forward PE standpoint. And if you really wanna get into sort of a value trade, uh, you'd have to press your luck that it would go you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of under $200, the 190s, uh, to start picking up Microsoft at a historically cheap price compared to earnings. But right now at 205, while that might seem low uh, to some folks because we did just have a dip, it's landing about flat and you can see it in the green box. It's about flat to where Microsoft traded all of 2019. All right, so price estimate of 205 lands right where we are from a historical standpoint. If you wanna roll in uh, some extra PE because you're gonna say low interest rates, things are trading at a higher valuation, uh, then certainly Microsoft's price today of 205 could go up even more, maybe to 210 or 215 if you want to add your own sort of uh, interest rate factor to the equation. I like to look at historical norms only because over time, and me being a long-term investor, over time things always come back uh, to the mean, right? They always come back to average. It may not be this year or next year, but it will happen eventually. I tend to be in stocks for a long time. Uh, so that's how I look at it. Bottom line though, can't go wrong with Microsoft in the long term, plus you get that bonus dividend. Uh, Microsoft might be one of the most perfect stocks out there as far as being able to take advantage of long-term enterprise contracts, being at the forefront of technology. Now you have Xbox and Surface tablets. There, you know, those are consumer-based, so you get a little piece there. And it's almost unlikely that you could even avoid uh, investing in Microsoft. If you have a QQQ or any ETF, mutual fund, whatever, it's probably buried in there somewhere because it's just one of the safest investments that still grows. Uh, available today. All right, keep in mind, guys, uh, as I said a couple times on here, I made a lot of assumptions. Uh, so you should run your own models and have fun with it. Just kind of see where things land. Learn to understand PE. Learn to understand EPS and how the two work together. It'll give you a great uh, perspective on any price that the market has to offer. All right, hope you enjoyed this video on Microsoft. Please give me a like and subscribe if you did. I will see you on the next video.